Farmers and their drivers are viewing work from new angles. Everywhere the search for better ways of cutting costs and producing more goes on. One answer is to get through more field work in less time, so tractors get more powerful. But power alone is not enough. It must be controlled easily and applied efficiently, for long hours in many directions to produce what is wanted. So the engineer thinks again, designs alter, and new tractors and implements reflecting the demands of a changing agriculture are born. This film is about such a tractor and about a plough that breaks the traditions of centuries. tractor from MF is very civilized. It goes a long way to give a driver what he has always wanted, comfort throughout a hard day's work. A cab like this, for example, is designed by drivers for drivers. It has a flat floor, spaciousness and all-round visibility, whilst hydromechanical controls take all the effort out of steering, braking and other jobs. What's more, filtered air, hot or cold, can be blown in to keep the inside pleasant, whatever the weather. A safety cab is taken for granted on a new tractor, but if a cab must be safe inside, it also needs to be quiet inside. That's why this one is insulated from the rest of the tractor and is secured through rubber mountings to kill vibration and noise. The only real way to find out what it's like inside is to get started and see how things shape up in the field. This is a big four-wheel drive tractor, capable of putting out up to 110 horsepower. So out in the field there's naturally a fair amount of noise around. But up in the cab, it's different altogether. It's quiet and it's comfortable. In these surroundings, a man keeps fresh and alert for so much longer and gets through a great deal more work by the end of the day. Approaching the headland, things happen fast and a big tractor has to be manoeuvrable and capable of really tight turns. On this one, center pivot steering provides the answer. All wheels are fixed and a powerful hydraulic ram hinges the tractor about its middle point. It means too that the driver always faces the direction of travel and the rear wheels, at all times, follow in the tracks of the front. Tractors must be designed to maintain maximum wheel grip when the going is really rough. They spend little time on smooth surfaces, and here again, the 1200 reflects new thinking. Take a look at this front axle. The same design is used at the back as well. In fact, it's the rear assembly found on most large MF two-wheel drive tractors. So with two massive, totally rigid rear axles on the tractor, a new way of maintaining traction and stability is obviously needed. It's achieved by allowing the front and rear parts of the tractor to tilt independently when moving over undulations. It's well worth seeing again. As the tractor front end climbs the bank, it tilts to the left. This is the full amount required this way. Then, as the front comes onto the top and the rear end climbs up, we get movement in the opposite direction. It's simple, 
but it's also most efficient in the field, as we'll see. An outfit like this, with over 100 horsepower up front and seven furrows behind, is the way things need to go these days. When ploughing with all four wheels on the land, centre pivot steering and a good view from the cab once more come in specially handy. With a tough climb and a tricky surface to face, it's reassuring to know you have a diff lock on both axles and a weight distribution that allows the front wheels to grip really hard and play an equal part in getting you up and over the top. Expensive farm machinery needs to be designed to make servicing and maintenance jobs as easy as possible. In this way, time is saved and the valuable investment is more likely to receive the regular care and attention it deserves. The engineer knows this and modern designs make things a lot easier. Components, once difficult to get at, are now accessible and easy to check and far less likely to be forgotten or left until it's too late. the engine is not the only thing that counts when dealing with today's larger and heavier implements. You need, for example, a rugged, precision-engineered linkage system, fully visible and easily controlled from the cab. The linkage should have features that take a lot of the heaving and pushing out of hitching up and be matched by plenty of hydraulic power for lifting. There's no lack of such power here, but with this additional built-in hydraulic ram, you get a lift force of up to 7,500 pounds to handle the heaviest mounted implements. Heavy trailed implements are no problem either. This one uses hydraulic power from the tractor for raising and lowering its own transport wheels. Modern quick-release couplings make attaching the hydraulic lines an easy matter, and little time is lost before getting on the move. A tractor like this must be able to meet many different requirements for hydraulic power. As implements of all kinds increase in size, hydraulics provide an effortless and highly versatile means of making adjustments by remote control. For this purpose, the tractor has an additional hydraulic system tailor-made for the job of working single or double-acting rams. With a big acreage to cover, it's a question of getting along fast at an engine speed that makes the most economical use of fuel. For this, you need a really well-thought-out transmission system. So on this tractor, the engineers have fitted MF's multi-power with a choice of 12 forward speed ratios, no less than six of which are in the range needed for field cultivations. The power takeoff shaft is yet another vital outlet for engine power. A whole range of soil engaging and crop processing machines are powered from this source. Here again, power requirements have an upward trend. And this rotavator, for example, can use 100 horsepower or more.
Although challenged by new and successful techniques, ploughing is likely to remain a basic task on the majority of farms. So the job of designing new ploughs continues with far-reaching results. One outcome of great significance is the plough you see here, MF's new 270 diamond. Among its many valuable features is to be found the answer to a problem of considerable importance to the modern farmer. Because ploughing is a particularly expensive job, it makes the search for cost reduction even more urgent and explains why ploughs get larger and tractors more powerful. Now just here lies the problem. It's simply that unless strength in a plough is to be sacrificed, mounted ploughs become so heavy that large tractors can often pull more furrows than they are capable of lifting. Just how the 270 diamond plough provides the answer, we shall see in a moment. The 270 looks different and is different. It's shorter than conventional designs and therefore works closer to the tractor and is much easier to lift and operate. Notice the open, unobstructed design made possible by the absence of coulters and landsides. Clearances are really wide to give soil and trash a nice, easy flow through the plough. All these valuable features result from the revolutionary design of these mould boards, which produce a furrow slice of a new shape. The best way to understand their true significance is to first take a good look at the conventional design of plough. See how the mould boards are well spaced out, which means the plough is longer than it might otherwise be. The next important fact is that the conventional mould board produces a roughly square-shaped furrow slice, like this one. The trouble with this square shape comes when you start adding furrows to the plough. When kept close together, the slices simply won't turn over. Their shape gives no room and they jam up tightly. The age-old answer is to space them well out from front to rear. It does the job, but can make a plough very long, and reversible ploughs in particular very heavy to lift. This is where MF's 270 plough comes back in the picture. Its new design of mould board offers a neat way out of the problem. And here we see the new shaped furrow slice it produces. Now let's add three more side by side. And turn them over. That's the way they go. Without interference and without jamming. It's worthwhile having another look. In practical terms, this means that mould boards producing diamond furrows can be spaced closer together on the plough. Putting the conventional and MF diamond designs side by side and building up the picture makes the point even clearer. The new MF plough is about one third shorter and couples this with all the advantages of big clearances and a simple construction. Whoever knew the plough, there's always the tiresome task of getting it off and on the tractor. This coupler device makes hitching up semi-automatic. It takes the effort out of the job and comes as a permanent part of the plough. Faced with a longish stretch of road ahead, one appreciates a plough that trails close and level and which remains steady at any speed. There's not a ploughman about who doesn't take a pride in his work. So it's only natural that he wants a plough that's quick and easy to adjust. And once made, he wants adjustments that stay fixed. So there's no stopping again to hold things up. The diamond plough needs fewer components so there's more room for tough, down-to-earth engineering. The skimmers, for example, 
have just two fixed positions apart from height adjustment. Either out like this to deal with heavy trash or in again for all normal work. The diamond plough cuts a 14 inch wide furrow anything from 8 to 15 inches deep. It pulls easier than other ploughs and gives you a chance of getting along faster and saving fuel in the process. Because the diamond plough is shorter, it's better balanced. As a result, it turns well and its performance is more effectively controlled by the tractor hydraulic system. This is a tractor tyre working in a furrow made by the usual type of plough. Notice how on one side the tyre runs over part of the furrow slice. On the other side, the tyre can rub against the furrow wall and is liable to damage from flints and stones. Here we are looking at an actual furrow made by the diamond plough. Notice the difference in shape and in particular the curved furrow wall. The furrow is easily capable of taking a tyre of wide section and there's practically no compaction of the furrow slice. The tyre is also well away from the wall of the diamond furrow and is far less likely to receive cuts from embedded stones. The shape of the diamond furrow is a new sight on the land. Like the plough which made it and the 1200 tractor which provided the power, it reflects change and the ability to discard old concepts. We have seen the plough and tractor in action and have recognised each as being very different from previous designs. We have seen a plough that breaks traditions and a tractor most civilised, a real driver's tractor, at once more comfortable, quieter, safer, easier to operate and maintain and with a performance to match. Finally, it remains to be said that the 1200 tractor and 270 diamond plough symbolise a partnership between farmer and engineer, a partnership based on a deep understanding of the land and its ever-increasing value to the community.